Don't sit down each other. This is a transcendental abode you live in here. It's good to see everybody. Hare right, Krishna. Well, uh, truthfully, we look for any excuse to come together to hear and chant because this is the means to coming closer to Krishna by being in the association of the devotees, the Vaishnavas. The devotees carry Lord Krishna within their heart. Avadvida Bhagavatas Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vivo Tirta Kurvanti Tirtani Swantak Stainagata Vita. Yudhishthira Maharaj said to Vidura that you are like you are a holy place personified. You're a Tirta because you carry Krishna within your heart. And wherever you go, you make that place a holy place of pilgrimage. So this world is uh, it's a difficult place actually. We live in a realm called Durga. And Durga means Durgachati, difficult to go. It's difficult to move anywhere in this world. It's also difficult to stay as well. And um, <clears throat> so the sages and great personalities are not concerned with themselves so much. They're concerned with how to do good for others. In fact, in Naimasarnya, when the sages came together, their main concern was how to expand a system to the world that would help people in Kali Yuga because they would be so disadvantaged. Prayanal Payusha Sabya Kalavazminu Gangana Manda Sumanda Matayo Manda Padya Hupadrita. In the Iron Age of Kali men have but short lives. They're quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. And now that we've come into the cell phone age, we've realized exactly how bad it can get. I was thinking recently, no matter where I walk or wherever I go, there's always some disturbance these days. You know, it's either leaf blowers, which is one of my pet peeves. They're so loud. What's the use? They used to use rakes. And it was kind of a soothing sound, but the leaf blowers, it uh, jangles the nerves. And then there's, of course, cars, and then the ubiquitous cell phone. And, uh, then I was thinking, well, maybe in India, but no. <laughs> At Coverdon this year, we were sitting in a room for about a month, and right next door, someone was building something, and they had the most obnoxious sounding drill you could imagine, or sander. <laughs> so we're always disturbed in this age of Kali Yuga. I guess if you just lower your expectations and know that that's the way it's going to be, and take shelter. Where there is shelter, then... Um, we can find some solace. So, um, <clears throat> the Sankirtan movement, Samyak Kirtan, means the complete glorification of Krishna at all times and all places and all circumstances, with no restriction. And Krishna is in every every place. Ekopya saura charitum jagaranda kotim yat shakti rasti jagaranda chaya yaranda Andantarasta paramanu chayantarastam govindamari purushanta mahamajani. Krishna enters within every particle of the universe. There's nowhere that he isn't. And um, there's nothing that can't be utilized in the service of the Lord. So, the glorification of Krishna satisfies the soul. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced this Sankirtan movement. He he had Sankirtan inside Srivasangam in Sri Srivas Thakur's house for one year. And they didn't let anybody in. Actually, this is this is the system for Sankirtan. That um, find a place where you can create an environment, an atmosphere, where you can hear and chant with the devotees. And um, go there as often as possible, and hear and chant. Hear Srimad Bhagavatam, hear Bhagavad Gita, hear Chaitanya Charjamrita, all the books of His Divine Grace. Uh, they're, they're ample, actually. You'll never come to the end of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Sometimes people come to me and say, I'm thinking of going back to school, get a PhD. I said, that sounds fine, but why don't you get a PhD in the, in the Bhagavatam? How many people have that? But you won't come to the end of it. The Bhagavatam, you can read it over and over again. But in a, an assembly of devotees who are satam, means their hearts are dedicated to self-realization. 
uh, if you hear and chant, when you hear and chant in that association, then the heart, um, well, Krishna enters within the heart. He's already there, but he manifests himself clearly, and he inspires the devotees from within. And, and from that enthusiasm that one gets in the assembly of devotees, hearing and chanting, in a safe environment, safe means there's no agenda other than helping each other to become purified. In that kind of association, then, devotees develop um, a natural enthusiasm to be Krishna conscious and to sh share Krishna consciousness with others. Satam prasangam amavirya sambhido bhavanti hrit karna rasayana kata tas joshanat ashua pavarga vartmani shadaratir bhaktir nukra mishtriti Kapila Dev told his mother Devahuti that in that kind of association, in the association of satam, the, the pure devotees, hearing and chanting, is very pleasing. It, it becomes very pleasing. And it, it's like medicine. It cures what, what's, what's um, disturbing us in this world, which is, the, what is the disease? Bhava rog. It's repeated birth and death. And no stop gap measure can cure that. Only thing that can cure it is, is the power of the sound vibration that comes from the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, in the association of devotees. One becomes so fortified in that association. Satam Prasangam Mama Virya Sambhido. It's great association. It's the place to be. It's where Krishna appears, actually. Krishna told Narada, I, I'm not in Vaikuntha. Um, I'm where my devotees, I'm not in the hearts of the yogis, I'm where my devotees hear and chant about me. So um, that I recommend is, this is the beginning, the beginning point of Sankirtan, is to find a place like this, like we're doing tonight, to sit in this uh, assembly and to hear about Krishna and chant about Krishna, Satam prasangam mama virya sambhido bhavanti hrit karna rasayana kata. It's like medicine. It goes in the ears, uh, and then from the ears it enters into the heart, and from the heart it definitely clears the path to liberation. We all know that the path in the material world is fraught with difficulty, represented by the letters pa, 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 ma, which indicate that when you come into this world, you have a sentence, which is called karma. You have to pay off what you owe from the last life, kind of like credit cards. You think you're getting somewhere, but actually, and you're having some success. But it's, um, well, there's interest, there's interest and penalties to pay, and it, it stacks up so fast and so high that you can't pay it off, so you just go on life after life trying to. In fact, I, I learned this year that there's, uh, last year, that there's a, um, in the Yoga Sutras, there's an explanation of different kinds of karma. One of the kinds of karma um, is a compartmentalized kind of karma because a, li a living entity gets so much karma that he can't possibly burn it off all in one life. Not possibly. So it, it's kept in, in a storage. <laughs> it's kept in storage <laughs> so that it, it'll become manifest. And uh, Rupa Goswami talks about this in the Nectar of Devotion. It's in other Shastras as well. How there are various kinds of karma. Some are in potential stage. Some are in seed stage. Some are sprouting. Some are fully manifested. It, it's really a mess. And so when you get in that much debt, there's only one thing you can do, and that's, well, you go to the court and declare bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> so similarly, Krishna says, Sarva Dharman Paritya Mami Kamasharanambra, just declare bankruptcy. You're never going to make it. <laughs> just come and throw yourself on the mercy of court and say, I can't get out of this. Please help me. I mean, you really have to feel like that. Anyway. Pa, pa, ba, ma, ma means the process of you have to pay off this debt and you have to work hard. You're forced to work hard. And you, how hard? Pa. Pa means that it's so hard that the foam comes from the mouth like an animal. And then there's uh, 
bhava, which means that it's, it's fruitless, and also you're full of fear while you're doing it, and then ma, which is mrityu. I hate to sound pessimistic, but <laughs> the material world's a uh, lost cause. So, you know, best use of a bad bargain. But the way to get out of it is through hearing and chanting. That's what the verse says. And what happens to pavarga? That's the process of birth and death in the material world. It becomes apavarga. And how is it changed? Well, a uh, is akar. Akar, Krishna says in the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, I am the letter A. So if you put Krishna there in front of that pavarga, it becomes apavarga. Just like if you have karma and you add an A, that's Krishna. Then you have akarma, changes everything. Karma becomes akarma. So Krishna can reverse everything. So hearing about Krishna in the assembly of devotees changes everything. And one is on the path of apavarga. Taj josha nad ashu apavarga varpani. Shraddha, Ratir, Bhakti, Ranukarmish. It's step by step process. By increments, we make advancement in the Brahma Samhita. Pramanais, Tatsarachares, Tarabhyaser, Nirantaram, Bodhayanatmanatmanam, Bhakti Mapyutamam, Lapay. Okay. By taking help of Shastra, by good behavior, and by practice. By slow degrees, slow degrees. It's kind of like the sun coming up. You can barely tell at first that it's coming and gradually, gradually. But by that process, everything becomes possible. So my point here is that the Sankirtan movement, it, it all begins in the process of hearing and chanting in, in an assembly of devotees. And uh, we like to say that um, distributing Krishna consciousness is really about distributing the overflow. Because from what you're getting, you have to distribute um, the overflow of what you're, what you're getting. And, um, of course, you can't give something that you don't have. And there is something so tangible about the process of devotional service. That one who takes to it seriously has something that nobody else has, and people know it. When they see devotees... They know it. Even if they won't take it at first, they know you've got something they don't have and that they want. And that's what they're buying, actually. It's not about buying a book. It's, it's the, it's the uh, demeanor of the devotees. It's the atmosphere that they create. They're tirtas, holy tirtas, actually. They carry Krishna within their heart. They attract Krishna by their sincerity and by their association and by hearing about Krishna, he appears in the heart. And it comes out in their eyes, it comes out in their radiance, it comes out in their, what they say, it comes out in their kindness. No one could be that kind. No one could be as kind as a person whose heart is melting in devotional service. Otherwise, it's not possible. Everyone's self-interested. So devotional service is uh, synonymous with Sankirtan, and Sankirtan means hearing and chanting in the assembly of devotees, and then we distribute that excess, which grows from that, um, which grows from engaging in that process. So, um, should I talk about Sankirtan? Yeah. yeah. Um, The advanced stage of devo Hare Krishna. The advanced stage of devotional service uh, means that a devotee develops a feeling of doing good for others. This is advanced devotional service. A feeling of doing good for others and knows how to do good for others. This is the this is the middle stage. Very Kanishtadikaris are very advanced actually. I mean anyone who comes to the stage of being a Kanishtadikari, which means that they they, with awe and reverence, they worship the, the deity in the temple, and they recognize uh, God. And, and there's a beautiful purport in the third canto of um, Lord Kapiladev. In fact, do you have that? You want to give me the third canto, um, 25th chapter, verse 35 or 36, in which Prabhupada talks about the Kanishta Adhikari. Kirishta Adhikari means acharya veva harei pujam ya shradei hete natad bhakti shichani su sub bhakta prakrita smitaha, 11th canto. Srimad Bhagavatam describes what is the beginning stage of devotional service. 
Acharya Meva Hare. Thank you. Acharya Meva Hare means that the person who's expert at worshiping the deity. But, Pujam Yasharehite, not that Bhakti Shu Chaani Shu. It means that person doesn't know how to respect devotees, doesn't know what a devotee is, actually, only sees Krishna, and also doesn't know how to do good for others. This is called the Prakrita Bhakta, or materialistic devotee. Beginning stage. But sometimes we get into a um, pattern of saying, well, Kiddhishadi Kari is not very advanced. But actually, this is a beautiful purport, in my humble opinion. Pashantite me rucharamja santa, prasana vakra runa lochanani, rupani divyani vara pradani, sakam vacham sprit haniyam vedanti. O my mother, Lord Kapiladev speaking to Devahuti, my devotees always see the smiling face of my form with eyes like the rising morning sun. They like to see my various transcendental forms, which are all benevolent. And they also talk favorably with me. Tardarshaniya vayavar udara vilasa hasek shitavama suktai ritatmanor frita pranams chapaktir anichato megatim avim prayunte. Upon seeing the charming forms of the Lord, smiling and attractive, and hearing his very pleasing words, the pure devotee almost loses all other consciousness. His senses are freed from all other engagements, and he becomes absorbed in devotional service. Thus, in spite of his unwillingness, he attains liberation without separate endeavor. You want to hear it again? I'll read the purple, please. Upon seeing the charming forms of the Lord, smiling and attractive, and hearing his very pleasing words, the pure devotee almost loses all of their consciousness. His senses are freed from all other engagements, and he becomes absorbed in devotional service. Thus, in spite of his unwillingness, he attains liberation without separate endeavor. You definitely want to hear their purport, right? There are three divisions of devotees, first class, second class, and third class. Even the third-class devotees are liberated souls. It is explained in this verse that although they do not have knowledge simply by seeing the beautiful decoration of the deity in the temple, the devotee is absorbed in thought of him and loses all of their consciousness. Simply by fixing oneself in Krishna consciousness, engaging the senses in the service of the Lord, one is imperceptibly liberated. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Simply by discharging uncontaminated devotional service as prescribed in the scriptures, one becomes equal to Brahman. In Bhagavad Gita it is said, Brahma Puyaya Kalpate. This means that the living entity in his original state is Brahman because he is part and parcel of the Supreme Brahman, but simply because of his forgetfulness of his real nature as an eternal servitor of the Lord, he is overwhelmed and captured by Maya. His forgetfulness of his real constitutional position is maya. Otherwise, he is eternally Brahman. When one is trained to become conscious of his position, he understands that he is the servitor of the Lord. Brahman refers to the state of self-realization. Even the third-class devotee who is not advanced in knowledge of the absolute truth, but simply offers obeisances with great devotion, thinks of the Lord, sees the Lord in the temple, and brings forth flowers and fruits to offer to the deity, becomes imperceptibly liberated. Shradhyan Vitaha. With great devotion, the devotees offer worship, respects, and paraphernalia to the Lord. The deities of Radha and Krishna, Lakshmi and Narayan, and Ram and Sita, are very attractive to the devotees, so much so that when they see the statue decorated in the temple of the Lord, they become fully absorbed in thought of the Lord. That is the state of liberation. In other words, it is confirmed herewith that even a third-class devotee is in the transcendental position above those who are trying for liberation by speculation and or by other methods. 
Even great impersonalists like Shukadev Goswami and the four Kumaras were attracted by the beauty of the deities in the temple, by the decorations, and by the aroma of Tulsi offered to the Lord. And they became devotees, even though they were in a liberated state. Instead of remaining impersonalists, they were attracted by the beauty of the Lord and became devotees. Here the word vilas is very important. Vilas refers to the activities or pastimes of the Lord. It is a prescribed duty in temple worship that not only should one visit the temple to see the deity nicely decorated, but at the same time he should hear the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, or some of similar literature, which is regularly recited in the temple. In the system in Vrindavan, it is the system in Vrindavan, that in every temple there is recitation of the Shastras. So it's like in Radha Damanar temple, you visit there anytime, especially during Kartik, and go around, you'll see there'll, there'll be a devotee there sitting. He'll chant Bhajan for 20 minutes, and then he'll speak for 20 minutes, and people just cram in and listen. It goes on everywhere. I, when I was in Navadri recently, I was at... Um, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj's um, Samadhi and his Bhajan Kutir and, and uh, went there in evening time and people from the village were just crowded in there to hear Bhajan and hear, hear Shastra. It's the panacea. Even third-class devotees who have no literary knowledge or no time to read Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita get the opportunity to hear about the pastimes of the Lord. In this way, their minds may remain always absorbed in thought of the Lord his form, his activities, and his transcendental nature. This state of Krishna consciousness is a liberated stage. Lord Chaitanya therefore recommended five important processes in the discharge of devotional service. So out of 64 processes of devotional service, five are considered to be the most important in principle. What are they? Chan Hari Krishna? Here's Srimad Bhagavatam? Living in the Dawn? Worshiping the deity. Sharing the devotees. Did we say we did we say the no. association with Vaishnavas? Okay. One to chant the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Two to associate with devotees and serve them as far as possible. That's what the devotees in Dallas are into: serving the devotees as far as possible. <laughs> Three, to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Four, to see the decorated temple and the deity, and if possible, to live in a holy place like Vrindavan or Mathura. These five items alone can help a devotee achieve the highest perfectional stage. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita and here in Srimad Bhagavatam. That third class devotees can also imperceptibly achieve liberation is accepted in all Vedic literatures. So even the Kanishta Adhikari is in a liberated state. What Above the Kanish Dadikari, <coughs> the Kanish did this as described. He doesn't know how to, yes, he doesn't know how to do good to others. But the next stage is the stage of the. <coughs> the Madhyam Adhikari. Ishvare Taradine Shu. Vali Sheshu Dvisatsucha, Prema Maitri Kripopiksha, Yakaroti Samadhimaha. The middle devotee is a preacher and sees four entities Ishvar, God. He sees <coughs> Taradineshu, the devotees. He sees Vali Sheshu, or those who are innocent, they're like children. And he sees Dvisatsu, which means envious people, people who hate God. So towards those, four entities. Towards God, he shows love, prema. All the devotees, he makes friendship in the proper way. Towards the innocent, he pours in as much mercy as possible. And for the duisatsu, or the envious, upeksha, he's, he avoids them, or he's indifferent. So he's able to do good for others. So this is the advanced stage of devotional service, doing good for others. And in the <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada's um, campaign, he was very much set on um, doing good for others. That was his concentration. It's a huge thing to make a campaign like Srila Prabhupada made 
In fact, anyone who's tried to, to do anything like um, make a, a magazine or what to maybe even a brochure, it's, it's not easy. What to speak of 80 or 100 fully illustrated books translated meticulously from Sanskrit and word for word English, purported, printed, illustrated, and you know, distributed, all that done with, with in, and, and in such a way that uh, he impressed upon generations of devotees that uh, this, is, this is the right thing to do. To use, utilize one's energies to organize in such a way that one can do good for others. I mean, only an advanced devotee can have this kind of feeling and, and use one's energy uh, besides in a selfish way, you know, just to maintain one's own interest, to go outside oneself to do good for others. And those uh, who just get caught up in that jet stream of, of others doing that and go out and do good for others, they also uh, develop a taste for it because there's, um, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like going out and meeting people. Uh, first of all, there's resistance. That's always good in life, isn't it? Well, meeting resistance means that uh, you become stronger. If you take on more and, and you meet resistance and you meet challenges, then naturally you become strong. Just like when you're, when you're teaching something. Well, the best way to learn something, let's put it like this, is to teach it to other people. Because in the process, you have to research it. And then inevitably, people are going to ask you all kinds of questions that you can't answer. And then you'll become hungry to learn how to fill in the blanks. And present it better the next time and that's ongoing one fortifies oneself in the process of teaching by by meeting resistance and also there's a, a miracle that happens every single time devotees make the endeavor to go and distribute mercy to others and um, I, I was just thinking the other day we were in in Santa Cruz, California, that's one of the places that we we um, do sankirtan. And we have a Harinam party. We set up a, a book table because, as you know, the more you show, the more you sell. If you just display things wherever you go, just make sure you display it. People come out of everywhere and um, are interested in it. It was on New Year's Eve. We had a Harinam sankirtan party and a book table and some prashadam distribution going on just in a small area right on the street. And um, when the when the music started, there was a harmonium, a kartal, a few kartals and a, and a madunga. Really good, too. It sounded beautiful. People stopped automatically. They wanted to watch and listen. And, um, you know, sometimes I could take it for granted, the Harinam, the kirtan, but people are stunned when they see it and the beauty of the devotees. One little girl, she, she was probably four years old, five years old, she stopped and was watching with her parents, and she just started dancing spontaneously. And she went on like for half an hour, just dancing, like really, um, she couldn't help herself from dancing. I saw another uh, young girl dance when we were in Palo Alto, and her parents didn't like the Harinam. They thought, if, you know, if her child stayed much longer, she might be indoctrinated somehow and but the I, I was watching out of the corner of my eye and it was an older girl she was probably 10 or something like that and she started jumping and it wasn't just out of frivolity but she she really felt the kirtan and her mother kept looking at her like stop it you know and then she'd jump again more and then she'd go let's get out let's get her out of here she started to jump and I remember in Palo Alto too there was one little Chinese girl who danced for about a half hour. I have a picture of her. It, it was charming. And at the same time, you could see the miracle of the kirtan. It, it entrances people, and they begin to dance, and they hear that sound. And, and, you know, the other thing is, in, in any process, uh, when distributing, when new people come in contact, there's something special about that, because it reminds us of our beginner's mind. You know the first time you came in contact with Krishna consciousness? How relishable it is? Well, I'm always trying to relive that. I mean, in a sense, we are. But in, in another sense, there's nothing that can quite compare in this lifetime to the first time I saw Back to God at Magazine. It, it was just the colors and the look and you know everything that was in there. It was so absorbing and, and just 
overwhelmingly um, I don't know, stimulating in a way that I'd never experienced before. So oftentimes when distributing Krishna consciousness, like I have a picture of this lady who came up to one of our book tables in front of an Indian store. She wasn't in India, she, she was from uh, Eastern Europe. She barely spoke English, but enough to read it, apparently, because she stood in front of our table. She must have been 80 years old and was just looking at the books. I would use the word gawking more like at the books. And one of the devotees came over and assisted her to, to buy a, a Nectar of Instruction. That's the book she wanted for some reason, although she'd never seen this before. And um, she took the book and she went over and leaned against a, a, a vehicle that was right next to where we were. It was a van, so it was kind of high. So she had her elbows on it and she had the book stretched out like this. And she was there for one hour. And then I said, I got to get a picture of this. Where she moves, and I took a picture of her one hour, and then two hours, she, she read Rupa Goswami's Nectar of Instruction. You know, she just came out of nowhere, uh, didn't speak that good of English, but she was fascinated by it and started reading that book. And um, the other day, we were going door to door, and I met this young Muslim boy, and um, he was very nice. He was interested in Bhagavad Gita and what we were all dedicated to. There was about five of us, and he went inside, and he, he brought us out a donation. His donation was he gave each one of us a soda, like an orange soda. And then uh, he, he also gave me a, a Koran and a book about the Koran. And so I accepted those donations, gave him the Bhagavad Gita. But he also gave, I don't know, maybe like $3.80, whatever he could scraped together in his house. And I figured that was a pretty nice donation from the heart, you know, all these things he put together for the devotees and gave me a Koran. So I put it in my book bag and uh, <clears throat> about a half hour later, I was walking from one apartment to the next. And uh, this gentleman was walking across the parking lot. So I approached him and um, showed him the Bhagavad Gita. And he said, no thanks, I'm a Muslim. So I said, here's a Koran. <laughs> And he said, I'm a Muslim. I have the Koran. So I said, but you don't have this. And I took out the book about the Koran. <laughs> and he gave a donation. And uh, on top of it, I said, might as well take the Bhagavad Gita too, because you can add it to your library. So he did. <laughs> and I was just thinking how, um, you know, anything can happen on Sankirtan. And, you know, miracles happen all the time. And devotees become so exhilarated when they go out. I see it in the faces of devotees when they come out. They're under the influence of the internal energy when they're out. They're representing Lord Chaitanya. And they're taking something which is authorized. You know, one of the things, um, I, I, I was speaking this morning at Prashadam about one of the ways to present the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, it's that I tell people when I'm, when I'm handing the book, I say it's a book on yoga and meditation. It helps you get free from stress. You've heard of stress before, right? And when they say, you know, yeah, I've heard of stress, usually I'll, I'll say, you know, you don't look stressed to me. You look very peaceful. It's your eyes. What's your secret, I ask them. And they'll tell me something, and it brings us closer. So I was at this one door. This young Indian guy opened the door, and um, he was on crutches. It took, to, to, took him a little while to get to the door, and he had a cast on his leg. He was on crutches. And so, you know, I said, Books on yoga and meditation shows you get how to get free from stress. You've heard of stress before, right? And he goes, <laughs> He just burst out crying, tears pouring down his eyes. And he said, I broke my leg yesterday. My wife left me and I have, and took the two kids. And, and I just got, I got, uh, and I'm in a lawsuit with my employer trying to sue them because they fired me unlawfully. And I mean, three things. Wife left them with the kids whom he loved, and then he broke his leg, and, you know, he's fired from his shop. And so, um, you know, I stayed with him for about a half an hour just to try to calm him down and, and you know, spend some time with him. And um, he hobbled in his, in his room, back room, and pulled out all his change and stuff like that, all his work. But I guess the point is, going, going out into the public, one thing is, especially door-to-door, it's like a little snapshot behind every door of the three modes of material nature. And um, 
you can kind of compare and contrast uh, your own life in devotional service with the life of, um, you know, trying to make it on your own, swimming in the modes of a chill nature. And it's often very stark. And just the kinds of people, you know, that you meet and the reactions that they have are, um, they're actually uh, fortifying, seeing how, how certain kinds of people are naturally attracted to Christian consciousness and other people, uh, because of their disposition, can't take it. Philosophy comes alive when, when you go for, for sankirtan, to spread Christian consciousness. So, anyway, it's an advanced, it's an advanced activity to take time to show kindness to others, to distribute the knowledge to others. One who does that, uh, one who gives mercy, gets mercy. Naturally, um, there's superior strength and knowledge. Prabhupada wrote this in a letter to <clears throat> Dayananda and Nandarani back in 1968. He advised them to always try to teach Krishna consciousness to others wherever they went. He said, when you do this, when you try to teach others, you will get superior strength and knowledge in Krishna consciousness. So those are a few random thoughts. Do you have any questions? Or um, could we hear from some of the um, senior devotees like Urjaswap Prabhu about Sankirtan? Can we transfer this microphone over? Sorry about that. Hare Krishna. I had the service of um, training your devotees uh, to do Sankirtan. And um, my experience on, in Sankirtan is in order to be in attracted to um, distributing books. Uh, the strength to go out and distribute the books to um, to be enthusiastic to be enthusiastic to distribute books. It's, it's going to come from the um, it comes from the ability to hear it and chant really really good. Uh, just like when you listen to. Um, Space ass, I forget you. My <laughs> God bless you. So, Vaish, he, he, um, he can speak so many uh, instructions from the scriptures. But his mind is full of many things from the books and the instructions of the spiritual master. You cannot be a good preacher and a good spiritual distributor, a person who distributes books, who is, if your mind is not full of the mercy, the instructions of this uh, the spiritual master and Krishna. You can't, you can't distribute if you don't have any sin, sincere um, desire to really, really help other people. And if you're not strong enough to help <coughs> can help other people, then you don't feel enthusiastic trying to be a preacher. So I will tell you that from training so many, many devotees, that if you really want to go out and, and distribute books, or you want to have that type of power to distribute books, you have to become very intense on reading the books. <coughs> reading and remembering what you read because when you go out and preach, people are going to ask you many, many questions of what you're doing and why you're doing it. And if you don't know the philosophy, 
you become like this. Huh? Yeah, you're losing your enthusiasm. That was great. Um, everything you do in Krishna consciousness is like in the will it help you? Just like I'm in Vaishas and uh, Progosian back in, in 1975 when we reached the um, you guys was in the morning used to get up and start chanting the Brahma uh, the Brahma Tamita and behind the in the in front of the deities that was so intense, right? And the devotees got 